Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest in a series of video presentations concerning how the uh, COVID-19 pandemic is impacting the economy of the Hickory MSA, particularly the employment situation. Uh, we'll once again be using data from uh, current employment statistics, and this time we'll be looking at the August 2020 data set that came out last week. All right, so taking a look at the first slide and uh, seeing how the, the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted our region, you can again see where we were a year ago in terms of employment. We had 154,800 jobs in the region, uh, pretty similar to what the March 2020 number was before the pandemic started. Uh, we've talked in previous presentations about how many jobs were lost between March and April, and you can see that loss of 28,000. We gained about 10,000 or so jobs between April and July. Uh, between July and August of 2020, uh, we gained about 1,000 jobs. So again, that's heading in the right direction. We're going to talk specifically where those job increases came from in just a moment. Uh, how are we doing as far as getting back to where we were? Well, we still have a little ways to go on that. We're about 16,200 jobs behind as of August 2020, where we were in March of 2020 before the pandemic started. All right, we'll look at uh, the goods producing sector first in terms of employment, and then we'll look at the service producing uh, sector. So looking at goods producing, and you can kind of see where we were a year ago and the March 2020 number, they were the same at 46,500 jobs. Uh, March and April, uh, mentioned again in previous presentations, we lost about 11,000 jobs. Uh, we gained about 4,600 or so of the jobs back between April and July. If you look at the July and August number, however, there really hasn't been any change. So we've kind of stagnated a little bit in the goods producing sector and again, when I'm talking about goods producing, that is mostly manufacturing with uh, some construction jobs as well. So we're still about 6,400 goods producing jobs behind as of August 2020, where we were in March of 2020. On the service side, uh, pre-pandemic levels, we were above 108,000 service providing jobs. If we look at the loss between March and April, we lost about 16,000 or so jobs on the service providing side. We gained about 5,800 of those jobs back between April and July as the state began to uh, go through its various phases. And of course, we're currently in phase 2.5. Uh, if you look at the job numbers from July 2020 to August 2020, we gained uh, 1,000 service providing jobs. And we'll talk a little bit in a moment where those jobs uh, came from. All right, uh, this slide looks at uh, big biggest percentage of job losses between August 2019 and August 2020. Uh, as you can see in the chart, furniture has been the most impacted industry. We have a 30% job loss uh, August 2019 versus August 2020. Textile mills is still in second place at 27.6%. Again, this one is still a little surprising considering uh, the importance of uh, PPE production that's going on in the region, but that sector has not uh, recovered yet. Uh, third place is leisure and hospitality services. You see a loss there of almost 25%. So we've lost about a quarter of jobs in leisure and hospitality. And these are jobs uh, such as restaurants and uh, tourism related industries. And then you still see the loss in healthcare and social services down about 14.3%. Uh, again, because of the pandemic, a lot of the uh, optional procedures, those were put on hold in March. And that industry is still feeling the ripple effects of that as all those jobs have not come back yet. All right. Uh, sectors with the biggest gain. Uh, and this is a good example where a percentage can be a little bit misleading. You can see where it says federal government 28.6%. That's actually an increase from 500 to 700 jobs. So the number of jobs isn't that big, but since it was a smaller sector, 
uh, you can see it went up 28.6%. That's what's causing that. Uh, state government went up 10.7%. You may be asking what that is. A lot of that has to do with uh, teachers coming back to work in August, even though uh, some of our school systems, they went to full remote, but it doesn't mean that the teachers were not employed. So as some of those uh, teachers come back in August, it's typical for us to see a bump up in uh, state government and even sometimes in local government because some of those uh, education positions are funded with local money. And that's why you see that there. Uh, when you get past the impacts of school starting back, most of the other gains were pretty small. They were under 2%. And again, this is kind of a stagnation. Uh, a few months ago, we saw industries that might have been gaining 5 or 10% in a month, but now we're seeing gains closer to between 1% and 2%. So until we see more of an opening where we move out of phase uh, 2.5 and we move into phase 3, I think you're going to continue to see in a lot of these sectors only uh, very slow growth. How are we doing versus other areas in the state, other metro areas? This is a comparison of job losses between August 2019 and August 2020. And you can see the Hickory Lenore Morganton MSA is tied for the greatest percentage job loss with the Asheville MSA. So why is our percentage number so high? Again, a lot of that has to do with the losses in uh, the furniture sector, as, along with textiles and leisure and hospitality. So because of those losses, overall, our job loss is 10%. Of course, with the Asheville MSA, their job loss is definitely tied into uh, leisure, hospitality, and tourism. And you also notice that our percentage job loss is higher than the state average, which is 6.9%. All right, this looks at the percentage job change between July and August 2020. Our numbers are fairly similar to the state average. We had a 0.7% increase, the state was 0.8. A uh, couple MSAs did better than that. You can see the increases in the Jacksonville and Goldsboro MSAs. They had a 2.3 and 2.5% increase, and Winston-Salem had 1.9, but and Tayville did too. Those are more outliers though. For the most part, we saw changes around a half a percent to uh, 1% or so. All right, if we look at uh, goods producing sector, again, this is August 2019 to August 2020. You can see our percentage job loss is 12.8%. Again, a lot of that's driven by furniture. It's tied for the second highest percentage loss with Greensboro. Uh, Durham Chapel Hill had the highest percentage loss. So Durham Chapel Hill, it's more construction driven. And that's why you see that big loss. Greensboro High Point, it's a mix of uh, construction along with some furniture manufacturing as well. So there's some similarities there. Uh, there's one MSA that's actually had an increase in goods producing employment over the time period, despite the pandemic. And that's the Wilmington MSA. You can actually see them with a 3.9% increase. That is due to construction. And uh, you're still seeing an increase in beach home construction, homes being built near the coast, along with some commercial, and that's actually helping to drive their number up. All right, goods producing July to August 2020. And we just talked about Wilmington's increase, but for the month, they actually had a decrease of 3.6%. So what's going on with them? That might have to do with Hurricane Iesis that uh, came in around this time period. Not, not exactly sure about that, but that's kind of what my thinking is. Uh, as you can see, most of the MSAs in the state, they show little change between July and August. So our MSA fits in right with that and is very close to the state average, which just barely went up a tenth of a percent. Uh, on the service providing side, uh, you can see our percentage job loss is 8.7%. That's pretty similar to lots of the other metro areas in the state. Uh, again, Asheville and Wilmington have the most uh, percentage job loss. Again, they have a lot of jobs tied to uh, tourism and hospitality, and that's why their percentage job loss is greater than other areas in the state. Uh, how did we do over the past month? We had a 1% increase. Again, a lot of those were government jobs tied to education and school starting back. Uh, we're in line with a lot of other metro areas, not quite as good as 
some of the metro areas, particularly in the eastern part of the state, where you had 2.5% for Jacksonville, Goldsboro at three, and Fayetteville at 2.2. Uh, Winston-Salem was the other one that had a pretty decent increase at 2.2%. But overall, we were pretty well in line and very close to the state average. Uh, leisure and hospitality, if we look at the losses over the past 12 months, we have a loss of 24.1% in that sector. That's pretty close to the state average. Uh, again, not quite as severe as some of the other metro areas in the state where you see more than a 30% loss. So this sector continues to struggle and it's probably gonna take more of an economic recovery and more of a loosening of restrictions before we see this sector bounce back. How did we do over the last month in terms of leisure and hospitality? And we actually took a step backwards. We had the greatest percentage loss of any of the metro areas in leisure and hospitality between July and August. And that is a little bit concerning to me because that might mean that some restaurants, they may have closed for good or because of a lack of sales, maybe they've cut some of their workers. So we'll have to monitor that closely to see if it's a one month little blip in the data or whether there's actually a longer term trend where we see more leisure and hospitality losses. All right, and if you have any questions about the uh, today's presentation, uh, you can certainly contact me. You can either uh, email me at uh, taylor.dellinger at wpcog.org. You can also uh, call me at 828-485-4233. Uh, and we're gonna continue this series at least for a couple more months. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how the, uh, hopefully the eventual loosening of some of the restrictions that we have in the state currently will impact our employment numbers going forward. So we hope you enjoyed the presentation. Again, if you have any questions, uh, definitely feel free to give me a call or email me. Thank you very much.